Hoga, or YT-146, was a United States Navy Woburn-class District Harbor tug. A tugboat. Now, I'm sure many of you are wondering, wait, 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 wait. Uh, don't you talk about warships? And sometimes I talk about, like, ocean liners, too. But, like, this is a tugboat. And they're nice and all, but there's, there's like, battleships and stuff. What's the, what's the deal with the tugboat? Well, Hoga is a very special tugboat. As she is a friggin' hero. But we'll get to that in a second. In terms of her class, well, she displaced 325 tons. She had a length of 100 feet. A beam of 25 feet and a draft of 9 feet 7 inches. She was she was a tugboat. She wasn't very big. She likely would have faded into the background, just like the rest of her sisters. But due to her performance, on a day that will forever live in infamy, she went down in history. Construction of Hoga was authorized on June 18, 1940, and she was built by the Consolidated Shipbuilding Corporation, in Morris Heights, New York. She was laid down on July 25th, 1940, and launched December 31st of the same year. She entered service on May 22nd, 1941 at Norfolk, Virginia, and was then assigned to the 14th Naval District at Pearl Harbor. She headed through the Panama Canal, stopped over in San Diego and San Pedro, and then headed over to her new home in Hawaii. Now, it's important to mention that while being a tugboat, and therefore responsible for tugging, helping larger ships maneuver in the harbor, she was also equipped with firefighting equipment, so she was a multi-talented individual. But mostly, she moved cargo freighters, and she was berthed at the Yardcraft Dock. She was at the 1010 Dock, specifically, on the morning of December 7th, 1941. When the Japanese began their attack on Pearl Harbor, Hoga and her crew sprung into action. She was underway within 10 minutes of the first strike, therefore running around while bombs and torpedoes were being dropped. The first thing she did was pick up two men that were in the water, then headed over to the burning ships at Battleship Row. USS Arizona had already suffered her magazine explosion by the time she got there, but moored next to her was the repair ship, USS Vestal, and she was in danger. Hoga's crew threw lines to Vestal and helped pull her away from Arizona at 8.30. Once that was complete, Hoga floored it over to the mine layer, USS Oglala, which was the flagship of Rear Admiral William Ree Furlong. She reached Oglala at 8.50 and was passed by the battleship USS Nevada, who was making a run for the open sea. Nevada was the only battleship to get underway that morning, as she had partial steam up when the attack started. Her crew had got her underway at 8.45, but this made her a target as the Japanese were hoping to sink her in the narrow channel and bottle up the harbor. The planes then concentrated on Nevada, but she continued her run, but by 9.10 she was in danger of sinking, and her crew opted to ground her on Hospital Point. But while this was all going on, Hoga was still trying to help Aglala, who had been damaged by a torpedo that had hit the cruiser, USS Helena, that was moored next to her. Aglala was listing and needed to be towed out of the way to clear the field of fire for Helena so she could shoot back. Hoga pushed Aglala aft of Helena. While that was happening, Admiral Furlong observed Nevada under attack. Realizing that if she sank there, that was going to be a serious problem, he ordered Hoga and the other tug that was with her to scramble over to Nevada and help her get to Hospital Point. Hoga worked with her fellow tug, YT-130, to assist Nevada over to the western side of the harbor entrance. By 10.45, she had settled, and Hoga then started fighting fires on Nevada's deck. She was tied off to the port bow, and poured water on the forecastle for over an hour to dampen down the flames. Once Nevada was stabilized, Hoga rushed back to Battleship Row and helped fight more fires on USS Maryland, USS Tennessee, and finally Arizona. The fire on Arizona was particularly intense, and Hoga worked on it from 1600 hours on Sunday to 1300 hours 
on Tuesday, December 9th. Hoga remained fighting fires for 72 continuous hours, and she even remained on active duty throughout the rest of the week, patrolling the harbor and assisting in recovering bodies. The actions of Hoga and her crew didn't go unrecognized. In February of 1942, Admiral Chester Nimitz commended Captain McManus, his men, and Hoga for a job well done. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor and America's entry into World War II, Hoga remained there, but was pressed into additional duty, clearing debris from the harbor as well as further salvage efforts. She was a central part in getting Pearl Harbor back up to snuff, and during the conflict she was redesignated as a YTB on May 15th, 1944. Even after the war was over, salvage work and heavy duties still continued for her, but in 1948 she would be transferred, on loan, to the port of Oakland for use as a fireboat. Oakland is one of California's most active ports, yet incredibly didn't actually have fireboat protection until Hoga got there. Heavy shipping of war materials from Oakland Army Base, as well as the presence of oil tankers, meant that a fireboat was probably necessary, and as such, Hoga was sent. The arrangement involved some alterations to her as well, including increased water pumping capacity to 10,000 US gallons a minute, as well as a berth, a new firehouse, and a partial defrayment of the salaries of the crew, which just means the city and navy would split what the crew were going to be paid. Hoga was given a new name at this time, christened Port of Oakland, though later it was changed to City of Oakland, and officially entered service in this capacity in July of 1948, and none too soon, because just the day after formal commissioning, she was called into service to help combat a shipboard fire on the freighter Hawaiian Rancher. She served as a fireboat in Oakland for 40 years, combating numerous shipboard fires, waterfront blazes, as well as rescuing people in the water. She also served as a tour boat for President Jimmy Carter, during a 35-minute go-around of the port on July 3rd, 1980. She would be moved to a new berth at Jack London Square on December 7th, 1982, and she responded to a burning tanker, SS Puerto Rican, in rough seas just outside the Golden Gate Bridge on November 3rd, 1984. But over time, the need for her was largely superseded by modern technologies. She was an old boat, for one, but large wooden warehouses and piers started being replaced with concrete and metal, which have a habit of not catching fire as readily. There was also better shipboard fire control systems, and the harbor was getting crowded with smaller pleasure craft, pushing Hoga out of a job. The Port of Oakland was looking for smaller, more maneuverable ships to meet the needs of the 21st century waterfront. But everyone knew that Hoga had a remarkable history. She was a hero of Pearl Harbor, and one of the few ships left that was there on that day. She was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1989, and the city of Oakland returned her to the Navy in 1994 at Treasure Island. And then she was moved to the nearby Maritime Administration's Susun Bay Reserve Fleet, as part of the National Defense Reserve Fleet. She was available for donation for several years, and eventually, the Navy selected the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, among the four other competing applications. The contract for the donation was signed on July 29, 2005, and Hoga was transferred to the city of North Little Rock. She remained at Suisun Bay until mid-2012, and she arrived at Vallejo's Mare Island Dry Docks on July 31st, 2012 to make her seaworthy for her journey to Arkansas. The work would be completed, and she arrived at the Arkansas Inland Maritime Museum on November 23rd, 2015. Once renovations on her are complete, she will be open for public tours. And indeed, by this time, she has been given her original name back. She's known as Hoga the unsung hero of Pearl Harbor. 
And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267, Orange Glass, Benjamin Owens, and Zag A1, Arthur Roy, Brian, Jack Carson's Road videos, Lord Off 444, A Person 723, Royal Hudson 2860, I Surfer 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, S Production 8104, Wheeljack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Caleb Crossway, Ohio Trucker 1, Andrew Bowen, Josh Johnson, Caleb Brainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Mr. Sloopy, Travis Delinsky, Jared Brussel, Joshua Long, Tommy Rossini, Ben McCullough, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Mark Holding, Dr. Racer 78, G Wiz, Mr. Terevel, Liam Wright, Hayden DeGrow, Metal for Life Guy, Battle 604, Hannah Bird, Railroad Preserver 2000, No, and of course, my dad. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.